Hey guys, Will Terry here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about writing in a way that the words rely on the pictures and vice versa. So, um, first things first, I'm going to I'm going to be showing you um, images from my book. So I'm just going to pull that up right now, and we'll we'll look at the first ones here. We're going to dive right in. Um, as an illustrator, you know, I've illustrated you know over 30 books, probably getting closer to 35 or 40 now. And um, the thing that is frustrating when I illustrate a story from an author is often the author has to write with too many words. And, um, and when I see Caldecott books that are done by author illustrator, where the author and the illustrator are the same person, there is an economy going on of words and pictures where they 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 flow together, they work together. Um, where you know, if you're writing the story, you don't have to say as much because you know you're going to pick it up. You you can already see what you're you're uh, going to illustrate, and you can you can write and illustrate kind of at the same time, even though you're not um, drawing as you're writing the words down. You're thinking of the pictures, and so you're really. You really are starting to plan the images. Now, this is really helpful in a lot of different ways. One, um, publishers really like an author illustrator for that very reason. Um, someone who's doing both jobs. One, it's cheaper to make a book. They can pay the illustrator and an author um, less if it's done by the same person um, or less advanced. They'll make the same amount over time but make 5% on the writing and 5% on the illustrating. And so 10% if you're the author illustrator, but um, they can advance you less. So it's, it's more economical for them um, in the risk that they're taking on in publishing the book. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's been something that has been very important to me. When I read the text that I get from authors, now, don't get me wrong. Some of the authors that I've worked for are amazing and they've written things that, I could never, I, I'm not accomplished as a, as a writer like they are. So um, they're writing things that, you know, are really fun to read. Um, all kinds of things that they're putting in to the book that um, is really necessary and is, is really, um, really good for the story. But every now and then there, even with some of those guys, there's things where I'm like, no, they didn't have to say that. And they didn't have to say that. And they didn't have to describe that. I could pick that up in the illustrations. I mean, they're doing... They're they're going they're they're doing more than they need to. It would be cleaner and more efficient if they leave that to me. Um, but when I illustrate for someone else, I don't get the option. I can't tell my editor, "Hey, can you tell the author to cut this and cut that?" That's not my job. That would be overstepping my bounds, and um, it would it would definitely strain the relationship. Um, and uh, and a good editor or art director would never bring that to the author anyway. Um, not unless I was like the most sought after illustrator in the world. I don't even know who that would be. But if there was such a thing, then you could probably get away with it. Um, and prob probably probably um, throw your weight around as the illustrator. But that just doesn't happen. Um, usually those illustrators are writing their own books by then. So um, but anyway, uh, one of the things that, that authors often do is they they put so much in the writing, it becomes so overdone and so redundant um, and so superfluous, for lack of a better word, that uh, when you're reading those books to children, they often lose interest. And I remember having raised three um, boys myself, um, I mean, with my wife, reading them books. Uh, I knew the books that I had to start paraphrasing. Um and I couldn't read all the paragraphs because the kids would slide off my lap. And, um, um, and, and the other thing is, it is known in the education world that um, images are more powerful. Um, and so, so the, the, when you're making a book, you should really rely on those images to tell part of the story. So that the children have to look at the images to understand what the words are saying. And by so doing, the, they'll actually retain the meaning of the words they are reading better, and they'll remember the story better because of the the pictures are so necessary. And they're not just we're not just saying the same thing 
that's in the words and in the pictures. So I'm going to share with you um, some of my book. I think the first four spreads. And uh, and this is uh, I'm not given the title of this book yet um, in this video series. By the way, the book should be released in March 2023. So if you are watching this video um, and it's after then, good chance that the book is actually um, in bookstores. And this is part of uh, my series, How to Make a Money-Making Art Project. So this is part of that playlist. So if you want to see the whole journey of this, this uh, book unfolding from start to finish, um, look for that playlist on my uh, Will Terry channel. And you could see all the progression of this and I, I will remind you that I'm going to be sharing all my sales stats too when I finally get those books and how I'm going to be marketing it how I'm going to be selling it um, my total costs and everything so um, so anyway yeah let's look into this so the first um, the first uh, page four here it says look what Paul got for his birthday a pickleball paddle so I could have said um, you know, uh, I could have described it, the, the paddle. I could have said, you know, it was his, uh, you know, 12th birthday or 10th birthday or whatever. Um, I could have put other kids in the background. I mean, at a birthday party, usually there's other kids, there's a cake, there's all sorts of things. That's not what's important. I want to reduce this down to the essence of telling this story and getting across. The party's not important. Uh, the only thing that's important is that that Paul is got this new paddle and this is a new thing in his life. It, that was really important for the story that he wasn't already a pickleball player. This is, this is his first paddle and he's excited and that's, that's all there is to it. So, so I have him, you know, smiling and he's, he's kind of excited to get it. Okay. So it says, so he was so excited. He ran down to the courts to play. I didn't say, he ran down to the pickleball course to play because it's obvious, right? So again, and I and I had originally written that in there, the word pickleball, um, and took it out. I'm always looking to edit out as much as I possibly can and still tell the story. So that is the essence of good design, whether it's telling a joke, whether it's um, you know designing an automobile, designing a phone designing an illustration, whatever it is in art that you're designing, it's a reduction down to the bare essential parts. Think about a joke that somebody's telling and they're running on and running on and running on and giving you like tons of information that it doesn't matter to the punchline of the story or to the joke. And so now you're, you're like, you can't even remember what they were saying in the beginning. There's so much that they've asked you to remember. So we're not going to show other kids at this party. We're not going to show family. We're not going to show cakes or decorations or anything. It's just him pulling this paddle out of the pack, out of the, the, the wrapped uh, package there, present. And then running down to the courts. It doesn't say who he ran down to play with. It doesn't say um, that he ran down the hill, even though I've got him running down a hill. Um, there's a lot of things that I could have put in there. No, he just ran down to the courts to play. Okay, next uh, spread. But the other kids wouldn't let him play. They told Paul that he was too small and he wasn't good enough to play on their courts. Okay, so this is really important for the story. I want to introduce the problem right away. So a good children's book is an interesting problem and an interesting solution. And that's really all it is. But you have to establish that problem really quickly what is the problem that needs to be overcome and so i have it on the second spread the other kids aren't going to let him play i don't say how they don't let him play i mean they did they physically block him we don't know doesn't matter um they wouldn't let him play they told him you're too small and you're not good enough now maybe they knew him from school maybe they knew that he had never played before maybe they had never seen him there before Maybe one of them or two, it had been to his party or something and knew that he had just gotten a paddle and he was brand new. And they are like, yeah, nah, you're not playing. So that establishes the, the problem. Now on this next scene, very minimalistic. So he left, okay? And he cried all the way home. I didn't have to say that, right? So he left. 
That's all I'm saying. So that you, the, the child, has to look at the pictures and get the story and get the emotion from the images. It's so important. And walk back home. I don't say that he wasn't broke, wasn't beaten. He was sad, but he wasn't broken because now he's playing with his, his uh, ball again and bouncing it on his paddle to indicate that even though he's sad, he's going to get over it. In fact, he's already getting over it right now. We're watching this in real time going from, you know, the, going through the grief process to healing in two pages right there. He's starting to heal. He's wiping away his tear, but he is, I'm not going to be stopped. I'm going to be bouncing this, this, this ball. Okay, and then the next spread, and found a place to play. I don't have to say that he's hitting it against the fence. I don't have to say that. It's obvious. Um, I don't have to say that he's in his backyard. Where else would that be? He's not going to go into some stranger's backyard. So I didn't have to say he went home and got his paddle out in the backyard and started bouncing his ball against the fence. I mean, that's like the obvious thing that we want to do as writers because we're thinking about writing a complete story. But when you're writing a picture book, you've got to be thinking of the images and letting the images handle a lot of that uh a lot of that job. The next one, Paul loved playing pickleball so much he took his paddle everywhere. And then I've got three illustrations, three separate illustrations that tell a story, a completely different story of going to the doctor's office, playing with the dog, and going to sleep. And I don't have to I don't have to talk about any of those. Okay. So so important to be able to write so that your your um, story relies on on images. And I'll tell you, um, if you'll really make um, elementary school teachers happy if you write like this, because they try to find books like this so that their um, their kids can learn through you know looking at the pictures but not getting the whole story and having to read the words and having them rely on each other and being able to retain their comprehension goes up when the 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 pictures are there. So I hope this helps. And again, uh, join me. Um, you know, I'm trying to do these videos every week to kind of give you an update all the way up until when I publish, when I get the books back and start selling them. Um, already working on a sequel right now. Uh, already have sequel ideas and have already started writing the sequel. Um, and so excited for this book. It's just been so fun to work on. I will do um, some videos on the process of like how I actually illustrate in um, uh, on the iPad and then how I color it in Photoshop so I'll do some demo videos to go along with this as well and um, if you if any of you are looking to you know up your game in illustration uh, I do have an illustration school it's called sbslearn.com and we have a complete curriculum start to finish on basically all the skills you need to illustrate a children's book we even have um, a, a, a independent standalone class called um, Children's Book Pro. But svslearn.com is only, it's like $24.95 a month. And uh, so super affordable, uh, taught by uh, my Jake Parker, Lee White, and myself, along with many other professional illustrators um, that have taught many of our classes. And um, it's the thing that I wish I would have had before I jumped into uh, children's books, there was nothing like this when I uh, when I after I went through art school, and I never had a program that was focused on learning how to be a children's book illustrator. Children's Book Pro is the most comprehensive children's book class online anywhere uh, for illustrators. Now there are great uh, writing classes for children's books, but as far as for illustrators, this is the most comprehensive class there is, and. Um, uh, the people that have taken it have absolutely loved it and said that it has totally changed their game. We have people that are now uh, repped, that have agents. We have people that have, that have gotten book contracts after taking this class. So check it out and I uh, hope to see you on the next video.